and it's all yours, Lawrence. <laughs> Long time I haven't seen you. It's been two days now. <laughs> Watch. It's only two days, Maharaj. I feel like it's been years for us over here that we haven't had your association, Darshan, Maharaj. Mm. I don't know if I'm in India, so it's hard for me to feel separation from America right now. <laughs> I can definitely understand that, Maharaj. <laughs> it's a crazy mm. place over here. But my heart goes out to all the devotees. Thank you so much, Marsh. We definitely need your blessings every single time. Hope you guys get enough to eat. <laughs> yes, Marsh. So far, by the mercy of Guru Goranga, it's been good. <laughs> Only by your mercy, Marsh, I'm sure. It's interesting. I've been reading Bhagavatam systematically, and I just... Just past this particular section that we were in. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm in, I just entered into chapter 18 today. Oh, yeah, we can't wait to get. I think we start that next week. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, this is a. This, you just came out of a pretty interesting series of verses and purports. Yes, Marge. Pretty intense. Straightforward. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada's right on. Tells it like it is. <laughs> and it's simple too, Marge. Like 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 Sri Prabhupada's purpose of so you know, it's like it's right on, it's straightforward but simple at the same time. Amazing. Easy to understand, but yes. Without mincing or uh, compromising the reality. <laughs> so true, Marge. Okay, so we'll begin. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Atai Tani Nasevata. Uyusu Purusha. Achet Vise Sato Dhamma Shiro Rajaloka Patir Guru. Therefore, whoever desires progressive well-being, especially kings, religionists, public leaders, brahmanas, and sannyasis, should never come in contact with the four above-mentioned irreligious principles. Purport. The brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes and orders of society. So also the king and the public leaders are responsible for the material welfare of all people. Progressive religionists and those who are responsible human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human life should refrain from all the principles of religiosity. And this especially illicit connection with women. The Brahman is not truthful, all his claims is a Brahman at once become null and void. If the sannyasi is illicitly connected with women, all his claims as a sannyasi at once becomes false. Similarly, if the king and the public leader are unnecessarily proud, unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking, certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities. Truthfulness is the basic principles for all religions. The four leaders of the human society, namely the sannyasis, the brahmanas, the king, and the public leader must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Before one thing can be accepted as a spiritual and material master of society, he must be tested by the above-mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders must be less, may be less qualified in academic qualifications but is necessarily primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Thank you.
Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapti Kam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Dadanti Kam. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale. Sumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaur Vani Pacharine. Nirvise Sasunya Vani Pasyatya De Sitarine. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadan Har Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare, Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare. One minute. All right, is muted. No, I'm there. I'm just uh, doing something else for a second here. Thank you. No problem, Arch. Sorry to interrupt. Keep up with the current times here. Okay, so. Um, we, we know when we hear, and we're also uh, requested to follow the four restrictions that are um, the foundation by which all sinful activities is understood, and these are named in here gambling, illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating. And Prabhupada expands it out, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Um, these four sinful activities are the pillars of all sinful activity. They are the foundation by which all sinful activities spring from. And we can see that these are very much common within human society as the present situation shows. Drinking, so many places for drinking, Prostitution is not even done in a, in a uh, we might say, organized way. Instead, it's so easy nowadays, anybody can engage in this kind of activity. They even encourage it, even inside of marriages. <laughs> and animal slaughter, uh, the amount of animals that go to the slaughterhouse per day is unbelievably horrible to hear the actual amounts. And of course, gambling casinos are all over the world and some places even specialize in gambling. So the world is full of sinful activity today. And it goes on as ways that people can experience entertainment, enjoy life. And therefore there are so many problems. Problems, social problems, political problems, economic problems, mental problems, health problems, 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 ecological problems, problems from all sides. And all of these problems are all reactions to the sinful activities of the human society. If one can refrain from these four, and what are the what are the reformations? There is an antidote for each one. Or you might say a religious principle that establishes one that, go, that allows one to be free from that. Austerity, cleanliness, truthfulness, and uh, mercifulness. Uh, it's mentioned in this section here, gambling destroys truthfulness, drinking destroys austerity, prostitution, cleanliness, and um, Animal slaughter, mercifulness. So these are the four principles of religion. In this section of the Bhagavatam, uh, Maharaj Parikshit has come across a cow and a bull, both being harassed by the personification of Kali, which has just entered after the disappearance of the Supreme Lord. And Kali is making his move, and he is attacking. You can see cow and the bull, which are the representatives of Earth and the representatives of true dharma. The cow and the bull represent dharma, 
and also cow represents uh, the bull represents dharma, cow represents mother earth, and Kali has come in and made his effect. Maharaj Pariksit, very powerful and very qualified king, will not allow a religion anywhere in his kingdom. He comes, he checks Kali, he takes Kali to issue, and then he starts to um, ready to kill Kali, but Kali surrenders to the Lord, and the Lord gives him a place to stay. Because it's understood that um, your religion, if it's not active, then it's not harmful. So he gives a religion a place to stay where it cannot act. When he says any place where there's a hoarding of gold. Of course, at first he said any place where these four sinful activities are being done. But Kali responded, nowhere in the kingdom will you find these things going on in your kingdom. So I have no place to stay. I am also your progeny. Uh, and you are the king, and therefore I'm in your I am one of your citizens. Uh, you still have to give me a place to stay. And so uh, Prabhupada mentions this, the word falsity. Falsity means the idea of uh, false pride, which is based on uh, illicit connection with wealth. And that is the gold standard. Prabhupada talks about that in the previous statements, how the whole society has artificially established this idea of a gold standard. But then, after some time, they took everything off the gold standard and left it as a paper standard with no actual gold backing. Even the gold standard is artificial because the amount of gold in the reserve does not, does not equal the amount of currency that is in circulation within the country. And so it is an artificial thing. And then, of course, in the United States, I know specifically they took everyone off the gold standard in 1920, in 1920, they took uh, the use of gold out of circulation. And in 1929, they took it out of circulation. And then in the beginning of the 1960s, they took everything off the gold standard. And then all we have, we have is this paper money, which has no real wealth at all. So that is falsity, the false sense of wealth based on this paper. Um, so those, those who actually want to follow the principles of religion, those who are actually leaders, must be free from these four sinful contaminations. It says here, even if they're less qualified in an academic way, that doesn't disqualify them. What disqualifies them is that they have to be free from these, what we say, irreligious habits or irreligious activities. Therefore, in our Krishna conscious society, we teach people austerity, cleanliness, truthfulness, and mercifulness, which counteracts these. Therefore, Prabhupada mentions in some of the purports that in establishing a society, the leaders must do two things. One must uh, establish these four principles, austerity, truthfulness, cleanliness, and mercifulness as the foundation for the operation of the society and the individual uh, activities within the society. And they must also remove from society these four activities. As long as these four activities are going on in any, even the smallest way, there is pollution in the society and it can easily spread. It's like a disease. And people are inclined to these things. There's, there's a certain class of people who simply live in order to perform these activities. Now animal slaughter has become an economic gain for a certain small class of people. And therefore they have no remorse of just slaughtering animals in order to fill their pockets with a lot of money coming from selling of meat. Uh, so they'll do anything. And so today we, we have to understand we are in the midst of a very degraded type of lifestyle, which is come by, out by the by the age of Kali. Kali mm -hmm. is simply sinful and the sinfulness is all pervading and it will continue to spread as Kali Yuga continues to pro progress 
in its activities. There's only one counteraction that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahama Mantra, Prabhupada mentions this, this, if this is adopted by the leaders of society and propagated within the society, this will push back the effects of the of Kali and start to bring about a quality of life which is conducive to human form of existence and at the same time will help one achieve the ultimate goal of life and self-realization. So anyone who is a leader is a misleader. So we can judge here that people who take the position of leadership have to be free from these four activities and must observe at least moral and religious qualities. Otherwise, they are not qualified to lead. It's not a character is actually the point of leadership, not academic ability. If a person's character is not good, how can he lead others? Nowadays, they say, well, what he does in the office is really what counts. What he does at home, what he does behind the scenes, not so important. No, it's actually is important because whatever, however, how people live will also come out in their leadership too. And who would like to be inspired by people who are sinful? Because they will propagate sinful activities simply by their presence and by their activities. So there's two words that uh, here, there's four class, four types of people are mentioned. The Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, the, uh, the kings, which all are, are the Kshatriyas, the leaders of society, the public leaders, and what else? The sannyasis. Sannyasis are the head of the uh, ashrams. They're actually the head of both the varnas and the ashrams. The brahmins are the head of the varnas, and the king is the head of the society. And then you have the leaders, the public leaders in different areas of society. All of them must be without uh, contact with these activities and lead people um, according to religious principles, which are given by the Brahmins. The whole society works cooperatively in order to function on all levels, both material and spiritual. The Kshatriyas, they organize, they give protection, and they arrange for society to get whatever they need. The Brahmins give advice, both materially and spiritually, on how the Kshatriyas should rule. And then that advice is filtered down within the society by the Kshatriyas through various types of legislations, rules, regulations, and programs. That is how society must be governed. And as you read, You'll go on from the verses that are upcoming. Prabhupada puts a lot of emphasis on the leaders in society must be uh, um, qualified to lead by being free from these four sinful activities. Um, and here it says that out of all of the sinful activities, truthfulness is the basic principle from all religions. Nowadays, it's very fashionable to lie. Nobody can trust anybody anymore because no, everybody uses either lie or sophistry. Sophistry is half truth, half lie. In order to get people to believe whatever they want them to believe or to further their own selfish interests. Well, lying has become a common thing. <clears throat> Advertising. Um, billboards and various types of media advertising are all geared with lies to sell products. And they'll say anything, all their push their products just to get people to buy them. Doesn't matter what they have to say, they'll use any trick or they'll use any, any half truth in order to you know, propagate their. their, their, their their products on the market. So this is the this is and uh, this is society. It says here a sannyasi, if he's illicitly connected with women, he's all his claims as sannyasi becomes false. So 
Sanyasi may have to lead his disciples who are also women, but he should also refrain from wrong connection, which means personal intimate relationships with ladies. And therefore, you'll see that nowadays within the society, especially in the Indian society, you'll see have it, you see these sannyasis or leaders of different mats and groups and their yogis and some others. Most of their followers are women, and many of them have been caught with illicit activities with their followers. There was one in America, I remember he was very popular for years, and uh, he, he was exposed and then later taken to court and then thrown out of the country of America, mostly because of tax evasion. But he was he was implicated with his some of his followers. And this happens a lot. And so because they have no spiritual acumen, they 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 dress as sannyasis and claim to be renunciates in order to track people, in order to get followers or to get some kind of uh, material remuneration. <laughs> so this is Kali Yuga. It's full of lying. Cheating, bickering, enmity, envy, falsity, nepotism, it's everywhere. So we have to be careful in our Krishna consciousness society to very strictly follow the rules and regulations given to us by our spiritual master and become very much attuned to not being affected by the, the, the mood of the non devotees. In other words, we should be truthful, clean, austere, uh, uh, know the scriptures, be able to speak the scriptures also, uh, simple in our daily, day-to-day -day activities, simple in our lifestyle also. We want us to be also very, very um, detached from uh, activities that bring about the uh, results that bring great, great amounts of wealth or power into, into the society and not claim to take some of it for oneself. Whatever we do is for to be used for the propagation of religious principles and to purify the devotees in their execution of devotional service. So it's um, uh, the devotees must live very strictly by what we've been given, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, everything is there. Bhagavad Gita speaks a lot about personal qualifications, qualities, execution of devotional service, the, the purpose of austerities and the enthusiasm one must develop in executing one's devotional service. If we follow very carefully Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam as given by our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, then, uh, then we, have, we have exemplary character. It's our character that really is going to spread Krishna consciousness. We have many programs, but unless the character is ideal, the programs will not last, they will simply be shallow. It is the character of the devotees. And what are those characters? The devotees are kind, they're simple, they work for the welfare of others, they are not greedy, lusty, avaricious. They are always thinking how to glorify the Lord and how to include others in the glorification of the Lord. These are just some of the few. From the many principles, the devotees are also very silent when it comes to material topics. They are also very, um, know, they, they do not eat more than required. They do not sleep more than required, as mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. They are ideal persons 
and if you they their characters are so exemplary that people will be simply be attracted to the movement of Krishna consciousness by the character and quality of the devotees. And of course, Prabhupada said, the devotee is a perfect gentleman, a perfect lady. In other words, they give respects to all living entities. So these are these are the things that will make our Krishna conscious movement attractive and have made the Krishna conscious movement attractive. And it's also these if we live by these qualities, we become happy and we become free from anxiety, which is the characteristic of the entire material world. Everyone's full of anxiety. The bodies have no anxiety because. The only anxiety a devotee may have is that he gets a, he or she may be a little anxious to push on Krishna consciousness. But that type of anxiety is spiritual and therefore it elevates the consciousness. A devotee is free from material anxiety because they have no material desires. Okay, so this is just some of the characteristics and qualities of leadership which means ultimately a devotee in all senses is a leader. Whether you are in a position of leadership or you're not in a position of leadership, you have influence. And that influence should be tempered by these characteristics. That is austerity, mercifulness, truthfulness, cleanliness. Thank you so much, Marge, for the wonderful class and a good, very, very nice points that we, I'm, I hope that we all can um, uh, take in and have some questions. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that uh, we can see each other and turn, off the, turn on the videos. I request devotees, if you're able to, please do turn on your videos so that we can see each other and Marge can see us and have each other's association. Um, are there any questions from devotees from this very, very nice class about the four qualities, the rules and regulations? And to me, actually, I, can, I think I'll ask that with the question, Maharaj. Um, when you spoke about austerity, Maharaj, and you mentioned that how important it is that for devotees to, to live a Krishna conscious life to uh, apply the principle of austerity, Nowadays, Marge, the word austerity has a negative connotation. You know, when we use the word austerity, people think, oh, I'm going to be poor like a beggar. So, but at the same time, um, austerity also helps us to learn to be detached and everything belongs to the Lord. So how, as, as practicing devotees, Marge, as Kali Yuga is um, getting crazy because there's so much uh, you know distraction and attachment to whatever's happening there how can we develop the mood and understanding of the importance of austerity Maharaj in spiritual life well austerity has a very clear definition it means to give up something that you may like for a higher purpose and there are recommended austerities as described in the 17th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Austerities of the body, austerities of speech, austerities of the mind. And they're listed with explanations on each of these. The main austerity is to chant the Hare Krishna Mudha Mantra and follow the four regulations. So reframing from these four sinful activities is the recommended austerities for each and every devotee. And chanting the Hare Krishna is the sacrifice in this age. So that sacrifice is also conceived as the topmost of all austerities. The chants, at least for those who are initiated, 16 rounds on beats every day without fail. And then the other austerities, as mentioned in the Gita, austerities of the body, such as cleanliness, um, worship of the superiors, um, celibacy, um, if you go to uh, 
chapter 17 in Bible, the Gita, verse number, I think verse number 13, it describes the, the different categories and the different mysteries. And let's see. Okay, keep going. Let's go to go down the page. Let's see. Okay, 14 is where it starts. The austerity of the body consists of worshiping the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, and superiors like father and mother, cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and nonviolence. So these are called austerities of the body. And then next verse is austerities of speech, considering speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others. And to support what everyone says, one should recite Vedic literature as a support system. So austerities of the mind, satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence. And and avoid the four simple activities. What is the recommended austerity? So Maharaj, here, your prophet Purport is saying to make the mind austere is to detach it from sense gratification. And that has, you know, and that is always a challenge sometimes because the mind is always telling us to, to gratify, gratify, gratify. So how can we really work on the mind to be austere, Maharaj? Like it's because... It's just getting so crazy out there. Like even when we walk, drive on the highway, there's enough billboards to <laughs> grab our attention to get ourselves sucked in. Yes, uh, we're fighting against, you know, so many uh, distractions. And therefore one has to, Chant the holy names of the Lord seriously. Fix the mind on Krishna and the holy name. And detach oneself from these other things. And that takes practice. Like the mind, the mind says, all right, you're sitting down and you have this pizza, pizza, big piece of pizza in front of you. So you have one piece, you have another piece. Now you are sufficiently full of pizza. But the mind says, yeah, go for go for another piece. And so you are already, you're being tempted by the mind, which likes to program us towards enjoyment. And the intelligence should be programmed for us for the, for the level of restriction. So we can check the mind when the mind wants to go into these areas of sense enjoyment. So that happens, you have to practice it. And as you practice that, you get the higher taste. When you get the higher taste, then you start refraining easily from the lower taste. You know, oh, this is not good for my Krishna consciousness. Therefore, even though I want it, I like it, I'll, I'll, I will do it. Or this is good for my Krishna consciousness, although I might find it hard to do. Still, I do it because I know it's beneficial. So, as it's explained, one should work in such a way as that to accept things that are favorable and reject things that are. So that is a matter of knowledge and a matter of practice, knowing what is favorable for our spiritual life, and doing that, and knowing what is not favorable, and avoiding that. And through that, you get power, you get knowledge, and you get detachment when you practice like that, and you become satisfied. Therefore, one of the austerities of the mind is satisfaction. One becomes satisfied. 
not by anything external, but by one's own practice of Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Marge. So we have to, while the mind is going on its own trip of having us, you know, get into more sense gratification, simultaneously, we have to train our intelligence to reject it. Yeah, if the intelligence is like the mind, then you're, you know, you don't have any hope. And therefore, you have, purify, you have to purify your intelligence by hearing from Shastra and from Guru. Guru and Shastra and Krishna are the foundations by which we develop the intelligence to execute devotional service. The words of the scriptures, the words of the spiritual master, the injunctions given by Krishna in, in, through, through Guru and Shastra. Thank you, Marge. And, and, and what's coming to my mind is uh, go, going back to the first and the foremost as your prophet says of the nine devotion, the first of the nine devotional processes is Shravanam, hearing, 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 hearing. Yeah. Um, to execute devotional service, we require to develop an intelligence that is not influenced by external uh, demands or outside influence. In other words, we have to be connected with higher knowledge, and that's where the intelligence gets its strength. Thank you, Marj. Thank you. Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Hi, Krishna. This is the Maham Blue Basin, please, all the audience, Krishna Prabhupada. Thank, Thank you, Maharaj, for the lecture. Um, so you said that a religion is not active if, if, um, if a real religion is not active, it is not harmful. But the fact with, that it's yeah, with that, that's the whole situation that was given by by Maharaj He wanted to uh, he, he punished Kali, Kali by giving him a place where he couldn't do anything. That's but Maharaj, the it is there. Mentioned. Yeah, that's mentioned in the purport. I can show you the purport. It's one of the future purports in this same chapter. You can read it in Maharaj Pariksit. Uh, he didn't kill Kali, but gave him a place where he couldn't function. But, but then, you know, gradually when Maharaj Pariksit left the planet, gradually, then there was no strong leader who was responsible, who was re representing the Supreme Personality. Then Kali made his move. Before then, he couldn't do anything. Although he was present. And the uh, Pariksha Maharaj protected the citizens of the world from Kali. He, dis he disabled Kali from function. But he gave him a place to stay. Because that's because he was a citizen and he begged for some place. So you can read it. Just go on and just read, read take the same section, and read the purports as Srila Prabhupada has given us. You'll come across that. Prabhupada says it a couple times in different purports. It actually comes up in the beginning of the next chapter, chapter number 18. He showed mercy to Kali, but at the same time, he di he disabled Kali from functioning. Okay, Maharaj. Uh, but the fact that it is there, doesn't it uh, gives the... Um, probability that in future it will get active, then what is uh, the point yeah, of that's, yeah, that's, what it that's, that's what happened. 
Therefore, when there's no strong leader in society who represents God consciousness, it comes back. Because these are the activities of people in the age of Kali. And how it is considered as the subject of uh, or the progeny of a king? I mean, irreligion. I I didn't understand that. So what 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 Maharaj Purusha did was he established the four religious principles: austerity, mercifulness, truthfulness, and cleanliness. And he said, when the society is functioning according to these religious principles, then People are not inclined to all of these other things. He drove out a religion and established religious prison. Mm -hmm. But a religion is still there, but it was inactive. But when the leadership changed and then Krishna left the planet, First. Then gradually these things started to filter in. We 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 read that in our own section. You'll you'll see that in chapter 14 on our daily class that we have. Uh, as soon as Krishna left the planet, all these things came in. But then Maharaj Brikshit came up and he pushed all of this out again. And he established truth. That's the power of a uh, God conscious leader. So Prabhupada makes the point, the leaders in society have to live, have to govern according to these principles. Otherwise the whole society will go down. The leaders are not up to the standard, then everything goes in. And that's what you have today. There's no leadership in the world. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll read more on this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice question, Namrata. Thank you. I thought I saw Prakshit's hand up, but he took it down. Do you want to ask a question or do you, is it answered? Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Please accept on holy businesses. All glories to Sheila Prabhupada. Um, when you referred us to Bible Gita chapter 17, the austerity section, and um, there was one part about austerities of the mind. And one of the things that Christian was saying was purification of one's existence. And I thought that was pretty broad. And I always wanted some kind of you know, um, definition of that because so many other things that we have to do have been listed. And then it seems that purification of one's existence is very broad. Then I read in the purple, and that's why I put my hands down. But in the purple, it says that, as you Papa says, purification of existence is to be Christian conscious. I said, oh, well. But then, then that's why I put my hands down. That means everything in Christian consciousness we have to do, basically. It's Krishna consciousness, but it's actually refraining from these four sinful activities and following mm -hmm. the principles of religion. That's purification of one's existence. Okay. Living according to purity. Okay. Thank you, my aunt. And as for leadership, you said you can't, in, in American Express, we can't buy a good leader these days. <laughs> we can't even buy one if we had somebody. So, divine intervention? Or what's, what's going to happen? I don't know. Well, Lord Chaitanya has got the plan, and it's mentioned in throughout many of the verses, and especially the up and coming verses. Spread the chanting of the holy name everywhere. This will push back the effects of communism and bring about the age of Lord Chaitanya, the older age. That's, Thank you, Lord. That's repeatedly mentioned. And Prabhupada says that the leaders also should propagate the chanting of the Lord's holy name in within society, not just the followers, but everyone. 
especially the leaders. Prabhupada gives the example how King Ashok was, that'll, that's coming up in one of the first books. King Ashok, he, was, he took the Buddhism. And because he was the king, he made it the, the, the state religion that everyone must follow this. And therefore, because he was the leader and he made it a decree, people were, you know, everyone was following Buddhism. That's one example. The other example is mentioned in the uh, uh, the life of the Lord Chaitanya and the Chaitanya Bhagwat for King Birhambir from Vana Vishnupur came in contact with Srinivas Acharya and became his disciple. Prior, the king used to be a Dakoi, but then after becoming purified, taking shelter of Srinivas, he became a great devotee and he made the, the rule in this kingdom that everyone has to follow Vaishnava. And Prabhupada's given, given somewhat of a loose understanding of that in his thought and what he said. It's the duty of the leader in society to make sure everyone is following religious principles. It doesn't matter if it's the religious principles of the Christians or the Islamic or the Vaishnavas, but no one can be a, no one can not follow any religious principle. So that becomes a requirement for the citizens to follow some form of religious principle. So that's that is that is good that is uh, saintly leadership. Atheism is not allowed. Mm -hmm. The only atheists that can exist are those who remain somewhat secret. As soon as they propagate their atheism, they're punished. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Thank you, Marge. I'm glad you asked the question. <laughs> the leaders have to be strong. We can't be whimsical. Or they can't be bought off by various types of perks. These are not real leaders. Today, we don't have any leadership. All the leadership is really, it's so bad that it's actually ridiculous when you see the people who are leading the world today. It's really, really pathetic. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, yes, Bishop Prabhu, please go ahead with your question. Prabhu, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dhanva Pranams from us. Thank you so much for a very interesting, in-depth class. Uh, we are following uh, things that matter. We spoke earlier about austerity. I'm at a stage in life where I can practice austerity of different kinds. Uh, going back to your earlier comments about the leadership of Parikshit Maharaj, in his reign, Kali didn't have any place to stay. But today, Kali has all the places to stay. And I don't know how the leaders can change because they are balancing acts of survival, politics, economy, they want to stay in power. So in the midst of it, I agree fully, it's Krishna consciousness, Mahamantra to help us. But is there anything to kind of help us and also find a solution for world leaders that can change their outlook to all these different wrongdoings. Well, Lord Chaitanya's movement is spreading gradually. Some areas 
more so than ever, more so than others. But this is Lord Chaitanya's plan to bring the golden age to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And we're seeing there are leaders in society who are, who are actually um, God conscious. Uh, well, I don't want to get into naming a few names because I don't want to get into that personal aspect of it. But there are some who understand what is really ruling and I actually have the interest of the people at heart. But because Kali Yuga is everywhere, even those leaders who are in charge find it very difficult to propagate spiritual and moral material principles or even um, material principles that are based on human characteristics and qualities that are normal for society. Just like everyone should have food to eat. The food is for is poison nowadays, but pesticides, herbicides, various types of uh, GMO and various other things. So even the leaders in society who are well wishers of people, there are a few in the world, um, they find themselves only can do so much because of the political system and the whole, the whole uh, contamination of Kali Yuga is quite all pervading in everywhere. But we must, as devotees, keep ourselves pure by being very strict in following Krishna conscious principles and uh, especially with our chanting of the holy name and working to spread Krishna consciousness in whatever way we can. If every devotee in our society was actively preaching Krishna consciousness, then you'll see how fast this, this how this world will change fast. But we have some, not enough. What's going on? Lord Chaitanya is empowering those who are surrendered. But whatever way we can make a difference, we do it individually, we do it collectively. Thank you, Maharaj. Very useful uh, tips on the Preaching. Thank you. Most important, we stay very strict in our own practice. practice. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes, Ma uh, Mother Pirtakirti, please go ahead with your question. Mm. Oh. I think about two years ago or not even, you had almost the same lecture, but all the points you said will come, will come. Now the horrible thing is happening. Now it has come. All those terrible points have come. And it is frustrating to think how it goes on. The only hope is that we have big power if we want to change. If we put everything in, in changing and in keeping it up, then we can, because we are stronger, we are with Krishna, and if he's on our side, then we can manage, we can make it. We just have to stick tightly together. Let's all hope, and let's all pray for it. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, Thank you. work for it, too. Thank you so much, Mother. Amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Prabhupada. So, Guru Maharaj, it is uh, prophesied that this Hare Krishna movement will save the world in its darkest hour. And we can see what is happening in the world today, how people are suffering, how much sinful activities are going on, and how there's no leadership, or rather the leaders themselves are looting, cheating, doing all kinds of things. So ISKCON is the only answer 
to these problems. But what do you think of ISKCON's leadership? What is the lead it is taking in bringing about safety? Lord, Lord, Lord Chaitanya is leading the lead. He's leading the pack. Haribo! He's the leader. <laughs> he's the leader. And he's not only working with us, but he's working with many people around the world to make it happen. He's he's God. He knows what to, what he's doing, but he has to work according to how much we are surrendered, and therefore he empowers his devotees. He's also empowering the empowering the non devotees to also bring about his movement in different ways by exposing all of the cheating and lying that are going on. Just like today, I saw a video uh, which showed that in the United States of America, uh, within the last year, 93 different places that contain warehouses full of food were, were on fire, burned down to the ground. So there's a conscious effort by the demons to kill the food supply in America. They want to starve out America and then make them people completely dependent on them. So they're destroying the whole food supply. And you can see, you don't have to be anyway, that the, the price of food in America is, and of course, over in the UK also, is going up and up and up and up and up because of shortages now. So that's the demon's plan. But they won't succeed. But they're doing it. So our job is to preach Krishna consciousness and especially propagate the chanting of the holy name. Just coming together with devotees in a group and chanting, whether it's at a house or at a temple or at a, or at a designated site, that that purifies everything, not just the people who take part in the kirtan, but it, it purifies the whole atmosphere all around the area, everything. Chanting of the holy name is the, is the means for, for propagating eternal religious principles in the most direct and most, most uh, powerful way. If we have that faith and we organize around that, you'll see everything change. It's changing already. There's so many things that are actually happening now that weren't happening last year in terms of people taking to our movement. Not only actively, but on the side. There, there are thousands and thousands of people who chant Hare Krishna who are not devotees. They don't want to join any society. They don't want to join any kind of organization, uh, but they're inclined to our philosophy and our way of life and all the practice of Krishna consciousness. So they do it among their friends and others. Many of them are leaders also in society. There's a big, the Lord Chaitanya is working in different ways, push on his movement. That is so heartening and that is so inspiring to hear Guru Maharaj. I'm uh, very enlivened to hear what you said in answer. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, but we need more because Kali is, has dug in quite deeply. He's entrenched. Uh, get him out. <laughs> Not so easy. Very nice question, Sri Devi. Thank you for asking. So, Maharaj, and, and in your class, Maharaj, you said that the more and more we increase the chanting of the holy name, the more and more we go out to the streets for Harinam Sankirtan, the more we, um, um, the effects of Kali can be put on hold, lack of a better word, Maharaj, or restricted. Everything becomes purified by the chanting of the whole thing, the whole atmosphere. Honest people will, will become attracted, the demons will run. <laughs> people in the middle will just be indifferent, but still, they'll get some benefit. Thank you, 
Thank you, Marge. Thank you. Very um, nice points. Absolutely. Any questions from devotees? Any reflections? Any takeaways? Please uh, do raise your hand. Yes, Brick should go ahead. Thank you, Marge. Um, as you were speaking, uh, one point came, and this is just information to tell everybody so that we can be more optimistic. Uh, the Holy Name saved one young lady who was about to commit suicide in Harrisburg. The Holy Name chanted by the Buddhist during Rathiatra. He was just close to where the Rathiatra was at. And she changed her mind and came. And now she comes to the temple. Well, so this is how strong the Holy Name can be. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you for that. Was that the, uh, the Rathiatra we had this year? In the Rathiatra yes, this right. year. This the, one year. That, yep. the one that you were at, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. From a distance, she was at the bridge attempting, and she heard Madangas and cartels, and she yeah. was distracted by it. And she walked uh, to the island where we had the Ratiatro, and she saw devotees happy jumping and laughing and smiling. And she asked, and I don't know who she asked, but she asked someone. No, what what is it that make you all happy? Because <laughs> everybody was jumping and happy. And then whoever she was talking to talked about the holy name and what this was all about. And she participated and she came to the temple next day on Sunday. Nice. <laughs> she asked bread. She actually asked bread. Oh, what's bread? bread? Oh, she's yeah. supposed to bread. <laughs> the one is fine for you, Max. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah. You picked the right person. Very yeah, Brett, <laughs> Brett was drenched in sweat and dancing, so I guess she got the right person to ask. Amazing. That Rathiatra was really good. Yeah. It was really good. There's a lot of good energy there. Thank you, Maraj. But you, know, Maraj, you know, like I have heard and read you know, uh, testimonies and pastimes of how devotees get saved by the holy name just by hearing it. But this is the first time that I've actually witnessed a person that was saved by the holy name and got distracted by it, lack of a better word, because of doing something wrong. So for me, it was definitely a, a, a living testimony to at least to know someone who actually, you know, went through that and got distracted. So it's like so real, you know, like it's real more than real kind of a thing. It's happening a lot with our books. There are people who are on the verge of, you know, various types of crises in their life. Some people are suicidal. They come across our books and changes everything. And I have I have a few stories in that regard. It's it's just amazing, Marge. Just amazing. In the, when we think of when we hear such incidents march it it gives us more um uh it, it makes us feel like this is real there is no two minutes of doubt or seconds about it. it's really real the books and the chanting it, it's so real yeah bob dylan said it <laughs> <laughs> He said it to the non-devotees. There's something happening here, Mr. Jones, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't know. I like that. I like that. I should definitely remember that, Maharaj. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's the people can't see it, but it's happening. Wow. Amazing, amazing, Marge. It really is. It really is. It really is. Thank you, Marge. Uh, I wouldn't even be on the planet if it wasn't for Krishna consciousness. That I can say for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of devotees would say the same thing that their lifestyle was really heading for a disaster the way they were living. But by Prabhupada's presence and by the, by the books <laughs> and the holy name, they came and changed, changed their whole life. Amazing, Marge. That's Each a has some testimony in that regard. Yeah. 
I'm I'm thinking, Marsh, that if we put all the testimonies together, I think we'll have I don't know how many volumes <laughs> of all the oh, testimonies. <laughs> It'll be outnumbered. Do you believe in magic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I know that song. <laughs> Krishna magic. <laughs> yeah, Krishna magic. It's the kind that <laughs> that once once you experience it, then you realize everything else is fake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so true. There's a post here from Saurabh Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to devotees, to you and Sri Prabhupada. I loved it. this year's Rati Yatra. I still have visuals dancing with you those three to four days. Very special moments for me. Which Rati Yatra was that? The one in Harrisburg, March. Um, Saurabh, the driver. <laughs> Remember him? Did you? Yeah. yeah we, had a, we should do that this coming year again. I will work on it, March. I, I, I have to first get the date from the city by January is when I'll know when the date will be. Yeah, I should know the dates by January from the local city and put my dates in. <laughs> uh, that was a really nice group of devotees who came together. I was actually quite surprised to see how things just came together so wonderfully. Thank you, Maharaj. Only by the mercy of the devotees and yourself, Maharaj, definitely. It takes collective effort. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts, clarification, anything that's coming to your mind? Yes, Raja Mandala Prabhu, go ahead. Oh, okay. He unmuted and muted. Uh, let me see. Did I miss him? He muted back up. Okay, so there's no question. Marge, would you like to end with one round of chanting? Oh, yeah. Yes. I have two rounds left. Can we do two? Yes, Marge, we can do two. Okay. As long as you're not pushing your time. No, Marge, we can do two. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Just in case you're wondering, these are two rounds that I didn't finish yesterday. <laughs> no problem, Marge. You're the boss. <laughs> we'll follow Hello. you, Marge. Three Davy chants 34 rounds a day. Wow. Every day. How do you do that? That's why you say so enthusiastic, Mataji. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I just need to jam that many just to be tolerable to all of you. Otherwise, you'll be kicking me out of here. That's why I have to chant so much. Yeah, you should chant more. <laughs> yes. Then maybe you will actually begin to like me instead of just tolerating me. We like you because you chant 34 rounds. <laughs> I need to know your secret, Sri Devi. Yeah. Okay. Jai.